Okay, so welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. And we'll speak about the Seder tonight. Thank you to Rabbi Goldberg. Thank you to Rabbi Diamond. Uh, everybody's here. I'm sure he's already ready. His house is spick and span and clean for Pesach. <laughs> and that's why you're here. We could speak about uh, the Seder. Um, sometimes we're so tired about the cleaning that uh, we get to the Seder and we're exhausted. So let's try to clean uh, this week and leave a little time to, to rest, for sure the night before yes. the Seder, to rest, to open a book about the Seder, because that's the important mitzvah that we have. We have the mitzvah of the Torah to tell about how we went out of Egypt, it's Yas Mitzrayim, and we have the mitzvahs of Achilas Matzah, the eating of the matzah, and the mitzvah of the four cups of wine, or grape juice, or how we'll see soon, those are the mitzvahs of the Seder. Um, just as a reminder, we have Erev Pesach, the day before Pesach, it's in fact, uh, we have the time zones, we have the time Hello, hello, welcome, we just started. We have the time until when you could eat chametz, and then the time until, can, until you have to destroy, burn the chametz. And afterwards, at midday, midday now is like 12.40, in fact, you should not, you should restrain of doing any work. Like the works that you do on Cholamoed, on Erev Pesach also, for example, cutting nails, for example, getting a haircut. Uh, these... Uh, That's on Wednesday, you said? Uh, this is, I'm talking about Wednesday, right? Yeah. Wednesday, mo Wednesday morning, you're still allowed to. Wednesday afternoon, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to try to do it Wednesday morning before 12.40. Why? What's the reason? Because, in fact, from Chatzois, already in time of Besamikdash, they will already go and bring the Korban Pesach, in the sacrifice of the Pesach. So it's a type of Yom Tov already that afternoon. So that's why better to do all of this before Chatzois, before 12.40. Try finishing all the ironing, all the uh, clothing, washing all the clothing. All these things. 12.40 noon time on Wednesday morning. Right. If you didn't finish, you can rely that if you need it for Pesach, you could do it. But it's better, if you know about it, that you try to do it already, everything before noon on Wednesday before Chatzais. Um So we're coming home in Mirza Hashem and we're going to start the Seder. Obviously, we're trying to prepare all the foods already before, we should have the moral already, we'll speak about it, the Chavoy says everything there, as soon as we come home, that already we could start the Seder. I remember as a child, going with my parents and grandparents, uh, eating somewhere, it was a kosher Pesach hotel, or by my grandparents in, uh, in Florida, and you come home, it takes so much time until we finally start the Seder, and and then everybody is exhausted and uh, falls asleep. So we try to prepare as much as possible before. So let's get uh, to the Seder. So we have four cups of wine. It would be easy if I could just on Pesach take a cup and fill it up and say Hagafen and drink one and fill up and drink and third <laughs> one and drink and fourth one and drink and that's it. It would be easy, easy it would be like that. But it's not like that. I can't say four times a blessing on one cup then and drinking one after the other. Every cup is a different blessing. Every cup has again Hagafen and some have an additional mitzvah. So there needs to be something in between between all these cups of wine. So we have four cups. In fact, it's four different, the uh, shyness of a geula, four different psukim that refer how we came out of Egypt. And also, everyone has a different purpose. First purpose, first cup is with the Kiddush. 
we make Kiddush on the first cup of wine when we come home of Shul. It's Kiddush like every Yom Tov. We have Kiddush and that's also our first cup of wine. The second cup of wine is for the Haggadah. I'm now saying the Haggadah. It's taking a long time. I try to explain to my children, grandchildren, and the Gumama says even if you're alone, so you have to explain to yourself the Haggadah of Pesach. Inter interesting that the Lubavitch Rebbe uh, a few, many times, please, 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 need help with something? Want a drink or something? No, I have. Interesting, the Lubavitch Rebbe obviously could go and have his Seder night at all kinds of different places, but many years after his wife passed away, he did the Seder by himself. By himself, and Hasidim just didn't understand how come, but after they understood, a lot of Jews are by themselves sometimes at the Seder, and the Rebbe is showing everybody it's okay, even you have to do the Seder by yourself. Well, obviously it's nicer when you have uh, children and family, but even if you do it by yourself, it's perfectly fine. You can be with family and friends, even better. So first cup is the Kiddush. Second cup we say the Haggadah, the story of Pesach. To whoever's there, we try to explain and really feel how it was to suffer in Egypt, how it was to be slaves in Egypt. and. You have, you could say it in Hebrew, there's an English translation, there's all the languages today. It's one of the books that has so many reprints and so many different types and forms and languages. So many Haggadahs. Just read, understand, appreciate the story of getting out of Egypt. And then we say the second time, on the second cup of wine. The third cup of wine will be after the meal. We have a Shulchan Oruch, we have a full meal, and then we have the third cup of wine. And then we say again Haggadah plus Hallel, we say the whole Hallel, and then we have the four cups of wine. So one cup on Kiddush, then second cup Haggadah, third one on the benching, the blessing after the meal, and four cup of Hallel. How much wine am I supposed to drink? Some people say the more the better. <laughs> I remember as a child I thought so, the more the better. And for the first cup I took the biggest cup that was available. And it was that sweet wine on the table. I didn't know then that sweet wine makes your head spin very fast. And I had one cup and then the second cup. And the third cup, I was already talking and dancing. And the fourth cup, I don't remember what I was saying until I fell asleep and right after the fourth cup. Uh, so that's when you're a child and you enjoy uh, having a lot of sweet wine. But uh, today, I guess, we try to say the Seder without falling asleep and getting uh, no purpose of getting shaker, getting drunk at the Seder. So how much are we supposed to drink? Here you see all kinds of different cups and it looks, they, they look, obviously this is the biggest one. This has the full shear. Uh, there's a big there's a dispute, there's different opinions how much should be in a cup of wine. One opinion says 86 uh, cubic uh, uh, centimeters. centimeters. Uh, it's called in, in Hebrew uh, milliliters or centiliters. Uh, different languages, different. Or it's about three fl fluid ounces. Uh, and the bigger opinion says five fluid ounces. What comes up to 150 uh, cubic centimeters. Now here we have the 150. This is the big size. Now, since it's better to drink the whole cup and having four cups of 150 is a bit difficult sometimes, you don't have to take the biggest cup, 
you could have the smaller size of 86 three fluid ounces that all of these even the smaller ones have here the three fluid ounces somehow I want to take 3.8 four fluid ounces but if it's hard for you to drink wine you could even go with the smallest one if you have three fluid ounces Can you use it's different fine. sizes for each cup you could use different sizes yes yes sometimes the beginning of the seder it's easier and i'm starting with the bigger one mm -hmm. And by the end, second cup, <laughs> third cup, and the fourth cup, I'm ready. Okay, let's go with the smallest one. Yes, it's perfectly fine. So, you could take a small cup. You, could, you just need to check before Pesach that it has the three fluid ounces. If it's a bit smaller, it might really be lacking. It has to have at least three fluid ounces or 86 uh, cubic centimeters. How much do you need to drink from it? One opinion says to a whole cup, and the second opinion says only majority of the cup. So majority is half, a little bit more than half, and it's fine. So half once, half twice, half third time, half four cups. So the four cups are in fact two full cups, because every time you're drinking a half. So it's not so much. That really makes it easier. If what type of wine to put inside? One sweet wine with a lot of alcohol, fine. But you could have dry wine. And if dry wine is also difficult, so you could dilute the dry wine with grape juice. So you have a little alcohol still left inside. If you uh, take a wine that has like uh, 12 or 14% alcohol and you do half half, you already have 6% alcohol. Some say it's better to try to have 4% of alcohol uh, and above. And if that is also difficult, so you just take grape juice. It's fine. Four little cups of grape juice and that's also fine. For the men, we drink it reclining, right? On the left side, recline. If you have a chair over here, it's much easier. You put your, like, your elbow on the chair and you drink it all in one shot or not take five minutes to drink it. It's supposed to take or drink it in one shot or up to 30 seconds uh, to finish that, at least a half, and if possible, uh, the whole cup. So that's about the different wines and the size of the cup. Uh, some people have a custom to try to look for wine that wasn't cooked, but uh, it's fine also to you according to Alter Web, uh, fine also to you cooked wine. Use a wine that you like, use a wine that's easy to drink, uh, that's the best. Uh, most people try to look for so the Zund, let's look for red wine, because the red reminds us of the blood in Egypt. Uh, uh, if you can't find red wine, uh, you could take white wine and add a little red wine before Yonta, before the Seder, to have give it a bit of a red color. To do it on Yonta is a bit of a problem, because you're coloring just for the purpose of coloring, that's a problem on Yonta. So that you need to do before Yonta before the Chag comes in. So that's about the wine. So four cups, as we explained. Then we have the mitzvah of the matzah. The matzah is in fact the mitzvah in Torah to eat the matzah on Lel HaSeder. And uh, how much should we eat? In how much time do we need to eat it? How many kazesim am I supposed to eat every time? Which matzah am I supposed to eat? Let's try to make a, a summary. So, the best, if possible, is handmade matzah. The uh, Lubavitch Rebbe was very, very for handmade matzah, if not for the whole Pesach, at least for, for the Seder, the original Shmura matzah. Um, if you can find the thinner matzah, it's much easier to swallow. Different companies make it, some make it very hard, and it's a bit hard to eat. 
and some make them much finer, much thinner, and it's much easier to eat if you're able to find uh, that matzah. Uh, if not, so there's also machine matzah. There's, uh, it should be real matzah. I mean, real matzah, it should be matzah and not egg matzah, right? You know the egg matzah? You don't see it so much in Israel. In the States, yeah. very popular. Manishevitz, egg matzah, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Remember as a child, we had the chocolate-coated uh, matzah or egg matzah. Um, that's fine for the other days of Pesach, but at the Seder, we want to feel the taste, the flavor of the matzah, not the chocolate on it or not the eggs inside of it. The egg matzah is in fact called matzah shira. It's, it's a kosher Pesach matzah, but it's not matzah for the Seder night. See the night, some people are even careful not to put salt on the matzah. I just want to f feel the taste of the matzah without any addition. Afterwards, in Pesach, you want to put salt, some people have put other things on it, but the night of Seder, I want to feel just, just the matzah by itself. <clears throat> so, you buy matzah, and we have the Seder when we come to the matzah, and we'll make a blessing on the matzah. So we have here two blessings that we're making. We're making hamoitzi lechem in aretz, and we're making al achilas matzah. We're making hamoitzi lechem in aretz. That's also lechem mishneh. Like every yontav, we need two slices of bread. So here we have two slices of matzah, and in the middle we have a broken matzah. Because during the hagoda we. We, we broke it in two, one, one piece we put for the Koyman, that the children go, everybody according to their custom, look for it, steal it, have fun, ask for presents, etc. So we, ha we say, it's holding the two full matzahs, and then we hold the top matzah and the middle matzah, and we say, and we have in mind the matzah that we're going to eat now, the matzah that we're going to eat during koirech. Koirech is a sandwich that we'll have soon with the lettuce, the moro inside. And we have also in mind the afikoyman that we eat at the end of the seder. So we eat in fact three times matzah. The first piece of matzah, then the matzah for koirech, and then the matzah for afikoyman. The first matzah, I'm supposed to eat a kazais, one kazais. Now since uh, there's disputes what, what's the size of the kazais, and since this first matzah is the biblical commandment of Achilas matzah, the most important mitzvah uh, of the Seder in the evening, so we want to go to a bigger size of matzah. Now depending on what matzah you have, if you have hand, hand matzah, a kazais is usually here about a half of a matzah. Handmade, a half, you have one kazais. If <clears throat> you're talking about a machine matzah, so you need two thirds of a machine matzah for the first mitzvah of Achilas matzah. Now, if it's difficult, some people it's difficult for them to eat so much matzah, there are who permit to have a quarter of a matzah. That's the most lenient opinion. A quarter of a matzah, hand or machine, very small amount, that is also fine. But let's try to go for the better opinion, to have two-thirds of a matzah of the machine or a half a matzah of the handmade. How fast are you supposed to eat it? Don't get scared. The most strict opinion says within two minutes. <laughs> so you're like very fast trying to put it in. And some people manage. I don't think I ever managed to finish it within two minutes. But there is such an opinion. There's an opinion that says three minutes. There's an opinion that says four minutes. There's an opinion that says five minutes. There's an opinion that says nine minutes. So you have here a lot of opinions to re rely on. The, the point is Let's eat the matzah. It's not like, no, you have a little bit, and then you talk, and then you have a little more, and then you talk. Here we have a mitzvah. Try to finish what you need 
and there'll be plenty of time during the meal afterwards to talk. In fact, we try even not to talk from the matzah. Some people don't be scared, some people don't talk. Since they say achas matzah, the whole meal they don't talk because they want to go on the blessing also of the fikoyman. But that's not the regular custom. The regular custom is try not to talk. You say you do matzah, and then you do the koyrech, uh, you do the morov, and then the koyrech, and after koyrech you're allowed to talk. That's fine. So we eat this matzah, we try as fast as we can, the men again, we, try, we recline on the left, and we eat this first matzah, that that's the big mitzvah of the first, of, uh, at night, to have this first uh, matzah. Um, if possible, the matzah should be made from wheat. That's the, according to all the opinions. Some people are allergic to wheat, so second possibility is spelt matzahs. There's very uh, hudor, uh, good spelt matzah. Um, some comes from this factory in Lakewood that they sell here in Israel. That is a factory in Israel also makes a spelt matzah. It's also a possibility. Somebody has a shalom is allergic to gluten, so they have special gluten-free matzahs for uh, people allergic to gluten. Those are special oats that we're careful, shouldn't be cross-contaminated uh, cross, uh, uh, with uh, wheat. And they grow them separately, and then they're made in a factory separa separately, and they check, they shouldn't have gluten in it. And that's for people who are allergic to gluten, they can also do the mitzvah with oat matzahs. Uh, I was told it's not so tasty. Spelled matzahs are tasty, the oats. But for people who need to do the mitzvah, that's the possibility that they have gluten-free oat matzahs and it exists also in hand matzah and also in machine matzah. Um, so that's what the matzah is made of. Um, we spoke about the size of the matzah. So that's the first matzah that we have. After the first matzah that we have, we finish eating the matzah, we go to the moroch. Moroch, you can have lettuce, you can have horseradish, some people eat uh, endives. I don't know, I don't have custom so much, but I heard about it. How much moroch are we supposed to eat? If you have one large uh, slice uh, of uh, lettuce, leaf. lettuce leaf, the Roman, uh, Roman lettuce, that you have already a full size of moroch. If it's a smaller size, so you have a little more. Some people don't like to eat the leaf and they want to eat only the stalk. So, if you have one big one, uh, it's, you need like two big ones. Or if it's smaller ones, you need like three or four. Here we, I'm talking without the leaf. But if you have the leaf, one big leaf, or a bit one and a half of a small leaf or two, that's again how much you need to eat of the mole. If you mix it together with the horseradish, so you don't need and a full size of horseradish and a full size of the leaf. You can combine. Take a medium sized leaf and add inside of it some horseradish. Some people even like fold it nicely, <laughs> the leaf outside, the horseradish inside, and then they try to swallow it. I remember a few times it looked very tasty and you say, mm, great, I don't feel horseradish. And suddenly, wow, you feel horseradish coming out and uh, you feel how it tastes. So that's for the mitzvah of the moroch. After the moroch, we go to the koirech. The koirech, we have the sandwich, like Hillel Azoken used to take uh, matzah and moroch inside and eat it again as a sandwich. So here again we have a matzah. Here, if difficult, you could go already a smaller size. Since this matzah is not the first matzah, it's not the matzah minat Torah, it's not uh, because we ate already, we did already the mitzvah minat Torah of matzah, now it's a mitzvah de Rabbonon. So if it's hard, as we said, to have a half matzah, you can go a little, from a hand matzah, you go a little less, 
if it's hard to have two quarters of a machine matzah, you could go with a half a machine matzah for the koyrech, and you put again a full leaf of lettuce inside, or medium-sized leaves of lettuce with some horseradish, and you eat it as a sandwich. I'm sure you'll enjoy the good sandwich of koyrech la Hilel Hazaken used to do. And then we did, in fact, the mitzvah. So we did already Kiddush, we did already the second cup of wine. Now we did the matzah and the moror and the koyrech. And then we have the meal. Have the meal, the wife prepared beautiful food, amazing dishes, and everybody's saying, well, I'm not hungry, I'm already <laughs> so full of all the mitzvahs. So um, we tried to eat. Uh, they can, you know, don't have to force yourself to eat. Eat at your leisure, eat at your time, enjoy the meal. But don't forget that at the end of the meal, we still need a little place in the stomach, leave some space, because we still need to have two cups of wine, they take space, and we still need to eat Dafi Koyman. Dafi Koyman is the, gla the last, it's in fact the dessert of that evening. We're going to have Afi Koyman. We're going to have again a matzah. Uh, here again there's different opinions if you need one matzah or two matzahs. Uh, most people eat one matzah because one opinion says why do we eat Afi Koyman? Because Afi Koyman is to commemorate the Korban Pesach. And one say it's the matzah that was together with the Korban Pesach. So whoever says if you can eat two kazaisim, say like this. If it's for the Korban, this kazais is for the Korban. And if it's not, if it's for the matzah with the Korban, so what I'm eating is for the matzah with the Korban. And you can eat again one kazais. Again, uh, um, or uh, half of a uh, hand matzah or a little less or two-thirds of a machine matzah or a little less and that's the last food that we eat for the seder it's it's the dessert and we want to fall asleep with no other foods afterwards so if you're hungry finish eating and then we don't eat any foods after that you have to take some medicine or something that you're allowed to but food wise we don't have afterwards something else Drinking after Afi Koyman. Some people try not to drink anything and they go sleep and the next time they drink it's in the morning. But if you're very thirsty after the Seder, so you have two cups of wine, but you're still thirsty, you're allowed to have a cup of water or a cup of tea uh, if you feel it necessary after the Seder to have a little drink. So that's for the Afikoimen. After the Afikoimen, we do the benching, the blessing after the meal, and we again have our third cup of wine, again to the left, and we drink it. People are already not so thirsty anymore, and they drink it slower, but uh, as we said, let's try to drink it at least within a half a minute. And then we say the Hallel, and then we have the last and fourth cup of wine that puts us out. <laughs> the last cup. Uh, and then we did four cups and all the mitzvahs. If possible, afikoimen should be eaten before chatzois. Chatz, now we're talking about mid, not midday, but midnight. Midnight now since we changed the clock. It's around 12.35, 12.40 at night. We have the chatzois of the night. Try to eat the afikoimen before midnight. Some people like having a long evening. Some try to have afikoimen before. And afterwards, you could continue the seder as long as, uh, as you want. Um, the mitzvah is to try to talk as much as possible about how we came out of Egypt, how we're so happy that we're out of Egypt, how we're happy that we're not slaves. And as we see, the sages used to talk all night till the morning about how they left Egypt and they're so happy that they're not in Egypt anymore. So that's for the Afikoimen.
the Koyrech, the Hallel, the Four Cups. Hello, hello, welcome. Um, any questions about the Seder? Or we'll speak about other things about Pesach. Any questions about the, the night of the Seder? We didn't speak about the Karpas. Karpas is in fact uh, to do all kinds of different things that night uh, to show that it's not a regular meal. That's why we eat. Some people have potato for Karpas. Some people have onions. Some people have uh, parsley, I think. Um, what else did I see for Kalpas? Um, I wrote it down somewhere. Radish, celery, potatoes, onion. We take it, we dip it in the water and salt, uh, with the salt. Try to better to prepare the salt and the water before. Dip it inside and when we have a little piece, don't have to have a lot of it. And that's in fine. And we have to wash hands before that. We wash hands without a blessing. Yeah. Sometimes people say, don't make a blessing, don't make a blessing, don't make a blessing. They remind everybody else and when it's their turn, they forget and they make a blessing. <laughs> so we wash hands without blessing. How come we wash hands? Because in fact, every time during the year, when you eat something that's dipped into water, it's called the Varsha Tibula Mashke, you're also supposed to uh, wash hands without a blessing. But in Pesach we remember this halacha that we dip it, we wash hands and then we continue uh, the Seder. So that's the Karpas. Um, interesting halacha, when we buy food, when we buy meat or chicken for Pesach, we're not supposed to say I'm buying meat for Pesach, I'm buying chicken for Pesach. How come? Interesting. Because Pesach, we call Pesach the holiday of Pesach. But Pesach, in fact, the holiday is called after the Korban Pesach, the sacrifice of Pesach. And if I say, I bought by the butcher this meat for Pesach, it sounds like you bought it for Korban Pesach. Up, oh, now you can't eat it. You said it's Korban Pesach. So, if somebody said so, he's allowed to eat. But it says that you should not say so. Say instead of that, I'm buying this meat for Yom Tov. I'm buying this meat for the holiday. Don't say for Pesach. If you buy a cucumber, you could say the cucumber is for Pesach because there's no way of bringing a sacrifice, a cucumber. But chicken and meat, that is possible to bring on the altar, to bring as a sacrifice, so we don't say this chicken is for Pesach, this piece of meat is for Pesach, but we say it's for the holiday, it's for Yom Tov. On the night of the Seder, we don't eat the meat or the chicken when it's roasted. We eat the meat or chicken when it's cooked. Because, again, the sacrifice of Pesach was roasted. And we don't want to do exactly like the Korban Pesach because we don't have possibility, unfortunately, now to bring the sacrifice. So, on the table, the only thing that we have that reminds us of, of the Korban Pesach is the Zroa, right? On the Kara, we have the Zroa, a little piece of chicken that we roast a bit before the Seder night. Some people even take off meat as much as possible, just need a little piece of meat on the, on the chicken. Most people use the chicken uh, wing. The, the wing or the chicken... Uh, uh, how is it called? What, the gargola? Yeah. The neck. The neck. A lot of people use the neck, take off a lot of them, and they roast it a bit before, and they leave it on the Seder plate, and we don't eat it. We just look at it during the Seder. And at night, during the meal, when we eat chicken or meat, we eat it cooked, not roasted. Um, if you add some water to the roasting, and it's partially cooked, it's also fine. It should, should not be totally roasted. It shouldn't be look like a real roast. Um, that's about the food. Not to forget to uh, the moral, the horseradish, to grate it before, uh, before Yontav. And the uh, lettuce that we spoke about, to clean it before Yontav. 
some people by mistake they want to clean the lettuce so much so they soak it a whole day before in water and it stays 24 hours in water or some people add salt to the water and they leave it a whole hour in the salt this lettuce won't be kosher for Moroch if it soaks 24 hours in water so it, uh, it's called kavush it's like a form of uh, cold cooking it uh, removes its flavor, it removes its uh, intensity and you cannot uh, do more with that, uh, with that lettuce. So without to wash it, just don't leave it in the water for 24 hours. Um, interesting question. We have today uh, lettuce uh, that in fact doesn't grow on earth, it grows on water. Uh, hydrophonics, they call it? Hydroponics. Hydroponics. There's a question on what's the blessing of hydroponics letter. Lettuce. Is it Adama or is it Shehako? Some rabbi says it's Adama. Uh, why is it Adama? It doesn't grow on the earth. Because it's a type of food that usually grows on the earth. Lettuce usually grows and the basic way it came from is from the earth. So you can still say Adama on it. And some say no, it grew on water. You say Shehakol on it. Now, during the year you can rely. If you say Shehakol, you say Adama, you have which rely on. But here, Pesach, better not to use hydroponic lettuce because some say it's not lettuce anymore. It's, it's a food, it's Shehakol. But it's not the lettuce, it's not the Moroch, it's not the Romaine lettuce that we're supposed to eat to do the mitzvah of Moroch. So during the year, we want to eat hydroponics, no problem. But for the Seder, try to get the original lettuce that grows on earth, the old way, like it used to, to do the mitzvah of Moroch. Uh, some other reminders. Um, quinoa, are we allowed to eat quinoa during Pesach uh, yes. for the Ashkenaz? So a big uh, con controversy. Uh, I think one of Rav Heinemann was one of the first one in the in the states who said yes, it's not kitneas, and the Ashkenaz are also allowed to eat quinoa, and the beginning was not so accepted. I understand quinoa, in the in, in, in sorry quinoa quinoa yeah. I understand today in the states a lot of Ashkenaz rabbis say it's fine. In Israel, people are still a bit. Uh, it looks too much like rice not rice obviously it's not a kidney so some people rely on it uh, to eat it it's fine some people are going to be more strict and they don't eat kidneys and they don't eat this either other things that uh, you could have hummets and don't notice I know sometimes people have play-doh for their children in the house play-doh is made out of water and wheat and uh, and flour Flour, water, color, other few other chemicals, and you have Play-Doh. So one rabbi in the state say, you have to sell with your chametz. And other rabbi, say, other rabbi said, but it's not edible. So I says, who says it's not edible? So says, look at it, it's not edible. Can you eat that uh, Play-Doh? So the rabbi says, let's find out. So he took the Play-Doh, added a little water, and put it in the oven and baked that piece of play-doh and then he ate the play-doh he says look it's fine it's edible and uh, that's how he holds and proves that play-doh is better to put away for Pesach because in fact it is kind of edible although there's colors in there but they try to put colors that are not toxic because they're afraid that children by accident might eat it. So they know that uh, you should put things that are not toxic inside and it is in fact pretty edible. I even saw that today because some people are allergic to gluten, there's gluten-free Play-Doh. Gluten-free Play-Doh is not chametz, no problem. But the uh, regular Play-Doh has a, a big question about, uh, about chametz, better to sell it uh, with uh, chametz. Um, 
I think we went over most uh, things. Yeah, any questions about cashering, yeah, about... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, on some of the center tables you will have a hard-boiled egg. And how does that fit in? The hard-boiled egg, why is it on a seder? On a seder? Uh, some people have a boiled egg, some people roast yes. the egg a little bit. Uh, we have it uh, two reasons. Zecher le korban chagiga, was a korban brought uh, to uh, uh, the temple when everybody used to visit the temple. Some people it says it to remind us of uh, that korban, and some say oh, the egg. What has the egg to do with a korban? It's not a sacrifice. The egg is in fact the Avelus that I'm not able to bring this Korban. I need to Pesach, I need to go to Yerushalayim. Everybody who used to come to Yerushalayim needs to bring a Korban Chagiga. A Korban, a sacrifice that he sees the beautiful Beis Hamikdash. And since our days we, we're doing everything as if we're bringing a Korban on Lela Seder and we're not able to do it actually, so, we have this egg that reminds us that unfortunately we're doing as if, as if, thing, as if but we want the real thing and we're still in Avelus, we're still mourning that the base Aminash is not built and the egg is a food of mourning, like uh, mourners have an egg, it's round, to remind us that people live till 120 and Chazushom afterwards and then they come back. So. This is, reminds us of the morning food, morning, morning, uh, Avelus. Uh, so we finished the Seder with uh, Shona Abab Yerushalayim. Uh, we're in Yerushalayim. Why we say next year in Yerushalayim? We are in Yerushalayim. We wonder Yerushalayim. Beis Amigdash is here so close by. How many? Ten minutes walk. But we want the Beis Amigdash, we want the Kohanim, the Levim, the singing, the sacrifices. So the Shona Abab, we don't have to wait till next year. It could come today and obviously it will be automatically that next year it will still be here, the Besa Mikdash. Any other questions? Cashering the kitchen, cashering some appliances, cooking, um, any other foods? Um, spoke about the, spoke about the charoises. We have the charoises. There are different customs how to make it. Most people put apple and pears and wine. Some add cinnamon and ginger. Some make it very thick. Some make it like uh, applesauce. Uh, the Lubavitch Rebbe used to make two types of chavoises. One, apples and pears and nuts, walnuts also, a lot of nuts inside. One with wine and one without wine. Why two? Because we take the maro, we take the lettuce, and then we dip it a bit in the chavo, it says, and then we eat the maro. It says not to put too much on it, and then we eat the maro. So the first maro was the maro, the chavo, it says, with the wine. He dips it inside, it has wine, and then he eats the lettuce that has a little chavo, it says, on it. The second maro was uh, the maro that we eat on the koirech, on the sandwich between the matzahs. And some people, we didn't speak about this, we speak about now, are very careful that the matzah should not become wet. Gebrocht. Shruya. Some people, Pesach without Knedlech and matzah dry is not Pesach. And some people, Pesach with matzah, only dry matzah. They don't want to wet it. So, when the lettuce that was dipped in the charoises for the koirech, it used to take the charoises without the wine. So that charoises should be more dry and not uh, touch the matzah and make it wet. Um, speaking of that, I forgot to say, when we eat the matzah, some people have hard to eat the matzah just like this, the, the way it is. So we have different solutions. If you can eat the matzah like this, great. If not, break the matzahs into small pieces. If you break the you crumble it up, it's much easier to eat. If you can't crumble up this half matzah, this third of a matzah, like we said, another possibility is 
eat the matzah and have a cup of water next to you, eat a little matzah and you drink some water. Have a little matzah and drink some water. And like this you're able to eat the half a matzah, the third of a matzah like we spoke before. If even that doesn't help, even that's difficult, take a plate, put some water inside, put the matzah inside, crumble it up in cold water, and it becomes more of a, almost like a daisa, more like a, almost like a porridge, and eat the matzah in this way. So obviously that's the last solution, but some people, it's hard for them, they don't have teeth, etc. It's hard for them to swallow or to crush the matzah with their oh, teeth. And that would be good for babies. Uh, babies could do that. Babies don't have an obligation uh, to eat the matzah, but uh, <laughs> uh, make a baby food out of it, like you say. Uh, but sometimes all, all the people, it's hard for them to eat the matzah, so they can't eat it like that, crumble it up. Crumbling is not enough. Have the matzah with intervals with the water. If even that's not enough, so mix the matzah with some water, wait till it becomes soft, and then you can eat it like this, have the portion of matzah mixed together. Uh, that's for the seder. Um, so the, even if you're careful of gebrox, of not mixing your matzah with water during the whole Pesach, but the first night of Pesach, it's more important to have your matzah even if it means to have a wet matzah than not having the matzah at all. You can't say, oh, I don't eat wet matzah, so I won't have any matzah. No, it's more important to have wet matzah than not having matzah at all. The rest of Pesach, if you want to be careful not eating wet matzah, okay, keep your matzah dry. Some people don't even put avocado on it. And some people put everything on matzah. Every custom has a source. Some put chocolate on it and eggs on it and... Uh, what else uh, do we have? Uh, matzah spreads. And some people just eat the matzah dry. Chabad, we try to be careful not to mix the matzah with anything. We eat the matzah dry and then we eat other foods. But uh, different customs, they're all fine, they're all good, they're all, all kosher, everybody according to their custom. Any other question that can help for the Seder, for Pesach, for... Uh, cleaning for kashering. Yeah, um, well, yes. when it comes to uh, kashering an oven, how is it done? Because I've had to heat it up the oven for a few hours. So, so some people don't kasher the oven at all. That's one possibility. They buy today. You have cheap uh, ovens that you could buy instead just for Pesach. That's the best. But if you need to kasher an oven, so. You clean the oven the best as you can and you turn it on on the highest heat for an hour and besides that it depends on how the oven was used um, if you could change the racks that's better inside of the oven because maybe a pita or burekas was done directly on the racks so if you have Pesach racks uh, Pesach trays that fit that oven that's the best if not, so leave those racks and trays inside the oven. And during Pesach, don't put food directly on that rack. Put it on aluminum foil, put it on a tray, on a glass dish. And it shouldn't touch directly uh, that rack. Some people are even more strict and they cover the glass of the oven. Because the glass, according to Ashkenaz, we don't cash a glass for Pesach. So the oven is metal, you can cashier it, so you add a piece of foil on the glass and then you have, even according to the most strict opinions, your, your oven is kosher. Some people even put foil all over the, the oven, that's a bit difficult, sometimes it falls off with the turbo oven, but uh, at least on the glass, if possible, to put a, a piece of foil. You can use a microwave kasher. Microwave, difficult to kasher according to Ashkenaz. The Svadim do kasher microwave. They take a cup of water, put it in the microwave, turn it on, and wait, wait until the water boils and evaporates. Obviously, after the microwave was cleaned very well. According to Ashkenaz, there's a lot of plastic and rubber over there. So, 
try not to cash it for Pesach a micro microwave or we put it aside or we get a microwave just for Pesach today they sell microwaves uh, for very cheap prices you're able to get a microwave oven just just for Pesach uh, and keep it from one year to another <coughs> so thank you very much I wish you all a happy Pesach an easy Pesach a fun Pesach a meaningful Pesach and we should be zoiche to, to have the Beit Samikdash, to the Simcha, Simashiach here, and bring the Korban Pesach and the Beit Samikdash very, very soon. Thank you for coming, and Chag Sameach to everybody.